Hello and welcome to the world of statistics and research methods. Confirmatory factor analysis or how good is my factor model? Before we start, a little warning. Even though I will try to keep it as simple as possible, I won't go too deep into any statistics and I won't discuss any mathematical equations. The topic of confirmatory factor analysis still remains quite advanced. So if you are a beginner and you've never heard of variances or covariances or degrees of freedom, maybe you should listen to this episode at a later point in time. Nevertheless, I frequently get emails from people asking me, well, I wonder whether I should study psychology, but I've heard the statistics are really heavy. Is it really true? The answer is, unfortunately, yes, it's not that easy, but as with almost everything in life, you can learn this stuff. It's not magic. But let's begin with this learning process. Let's get it started. And I want to start with the most important question. What is it all about? Why do we need confirmatory factor analysis? What is it good for? Absolutely <laughs> something. And I'll give you two very prominent examples. The first one is from intelligence research and the second one from personality research. Let's begin with intelligence. Here you see a very prominent model of intelligence. It's the factor model of intelligence by Carroll. And you see there's not just one intelligence. There are different so-called factors in this model eight different factors of intelligence. You see fluid intelligence, which is about your reasoning abilities. You see crystallized intelligence, which is about general knowledge. But you also see a factor which is called broad visual perception. And there's a factor about processing speed. How fast is your brain processing information? And all these factors are not directly observable. So they are called latent factors. What can be observed are the answers to the different items. So for example, for crystallized intelligence, you might be asked, what's the capital of France? Or what is the year Columbus discovered America? So these are items which load, this is the expression which is used here, which load on this not directly observable factor, crystallized intelligence. And to do so, these two items should correlate with each other quite high. And on the other hand, they should correlate only to a limited extent with items um, of the factor of fluid intelligence or processing speed. And in fact, there is a small correlation between all these intelligence factors. So somebody who scores high in crystallized intelligence probably scores high in other dimensions of intelligence as well. And this is the reason why in intelligence research many scientists today agree with this or a variation of this factor model of intelligence in which there is a so-called G factor, a, a general factor of intelligence, which means that all these latent factors, fluid intelligence, crystallized intelligence, general memory and learning and so on, that all these latent factors load on this 
general factor of intelligence, which again is not an observable uh, variable, it's a latent factor. Because we observe small to medium correlations between many intelligence items and on a higher level between the latent factors, we made up this new factor. So it's all in our mind, you might say, and it just expresses that people being good in one area are probably also good in another area. But it's just a model. We made this model up. It's a theoretical idea. It's an hypothesis. And a method to confirm this model, to show, well, if we let thousands of people take intelligence tests, then our data suggests that this model is really working one method to show that this model is really good is the confirmatory factor analysis. How well does the model fit the data? And we cannot only apply confirmatory factor analysis on factor models of intelligence, but we can also apply it to other models, for example, on the big five model of personality. It's the most influential model in personality psychology. And the idea is that the personality of a person is well described by locating it on these five factors. So you can have a high score in extraversion, um, a low score in conscientiousness. Maybe you are very open to new experiences. Um, you get a high score in agreeableness if you get along quite well with your colleagues and friends. And if you worry a lot about, well, what might people think about me, then you have a high score in neuroticism. And what you see here is that these five factors are hypothesized not to correlate with each other because there are no arrows between the factors. The only arrows you see here um, go from the factor to the item. So Y1 to Y6 are items which indicate extraversion. For example, person X likes to be in the center of attention or he likes to go to parties or to dance on the dance floor. And as the big five factors should not correlate with each other, these items, these observed variables, should not correlate with items measuring openness or conscientiousness. And what are the other arrows? What are these E1, E2, E3, E4? These are the error variances. So all variants of Y1 it can be explained by variance which is caused by the factor extraversion and it can be explained by the error variance. This is the variance which is not explained by the factor. This is the item specific variance. So this is the model and using confirmatory factor analysis we ask ourselves well is this model correct? Is there really no correlation between extraversion and openness or conscientiousness and agreeableness? One might expect a correlation. And in fact, in some studies, small correlations were observed. So the big five factors are not completely independent of each other, but all in all, the big five model of personality has proved quite well in the past, but most of the time it was tested in literate, in well-developed countries with educated participants. And an interesting research question is whether this model applies to all people in the world. Does it apply to illiterate people? 
living a completely different lifestyle than we do. And this research question was recently investigated in the study How Universal is the Big Five? Testing the five-factor model of personality variation among forager farmers in the Bolivian Amazon. So in this study, a lot of these forager farmers were presented a translated version of the Big Five Factor questionnaire and then also with confirmatory factor analysis the researchers looked whether the data fit the five factor model and what they found was no it doesn't work that well so maybe people from this clan called the chimane maybe these forager farmers have a different kind of personality structure. And it seems like the big five-factor model doesn't work for them. So this is a good example for how to applicate the confirmatory factor analysis. So the basic question of the confirmatory factor analysis is how good is the model? If I have a model with one factor, maybe it's not the best model. Maybe I should go for a two-factor model, which in this case, as you can see, is the better solution. Because in the one-factor model, we see that the two items um, is hungry for knowledge and is happy to try out new things, load only small on the factor extra version. The error variance is gigantic. So only a small amount of variance can be explained by the factor extra version. Whereas in the two factor model, in which we introduce a new factor, in this case we call it openness, um, the two items is hungry for knowledge and is happy to try out new things, load on openness, much better than they were loading on extra version in the one factor model. And therefore, as you can see, the error variance is much smaller. By the way, what are the loadings? Well, the loadings are equivalent to the slopes in a regression analysis. And if you square the loadings, for example, the loading of item 1 on extra version. If you square the loading, you get um, 0.36. And if you add this up to the error variance, you get 1. So all the variance, so again, all the variance of the observed variables can be explained by the latent factor and the error variance. <laughs>